So now we're going to talk about using replica plating to find the bacteria that has been okay. contains the transformed plasmid. So if you imagine that we have a plasmid, which is a circle of DNA, which yeah. we've obtained from bacteria. We've also got a human gene or a gene which we wish to clone into that plasmid. Yeah. We've got to, the plasmid is the vector by, by which means we're going to try to, tr to transfer that gene into a bacteria. The bacteria has got its own chromosome yeah. and it's also got ribosomes. So hopefully what we're going to do is we're going to get um, this piece of DNA, we're going to incorporate it within the plasmid DNA. So we're going to get a plasmid which has got a bit of the DNA incorporated in it. We're then going to put that within our bacteria yeah. in the hope that this piece of DNA will get transcribed into mRNA and then get translated into protein by the ribosomes okay. so it then makes the particular proteins that we're interested in or and has the genes that we're interested yeah. in. So the issue here is how do you find the bacteria that have got the plasmid in it but also have got the plasmid that contains the gene and what we do in order to do this is we use a selection pressure or a marker genes in order to find it. Okay. And the thing we use here as a selector is the ability to survive an antibiotic. Okay, now if you imagine we take a bacteria and we mix it with the plasmids. Yeah. We obviously, we're going to heat treat the the bacteria in order to make it more competent so it takes up more of the plasmids from the environment and therefore more of the bacteria are transformed. Okay, so you, put, you heat it up? You, you heat shock it by using ice and, um, and higher temperatures. So you might heat it to like 41 degrees, 42 degrees, okay. and then heat shock it with putting it into ice to try and punch some holes in the um, cell membrane. Okay. Um, also, you'll treat it with things like calcium salts so that the, it makes it easier for the plasmid to go through. Oh, yeah. Now, what you have is three classes of bacteria. You have, at the end of this experiment, you have bacteria that contain just a standard chromosome. Yeah. You then have bacteria that will contain a plasmid. You also have bacteria that have a plasmid that has the gene introduced into it. Yeah. So what you want is you want to grow, you want to select for just these bacteria, yeah. but you want to not grow these ones or these ones. Yeah. So what, how you do that is you use antibiotics as a selection pressure to enable you to do that. Okay. And you do this by a, t a form of what's called replica plating. So let's have another closer look at the plasma that's being used here. So the plasma that you've used is a circle of DNA. And on there, there are a couple of genes that code for resistance. There is a gene that codes for ampicillin resistance. We'll call it AMP. Okay. Now, ampicillin is an antibiotic. It will kill bacteria that don't possess the resistance gene for it. Yeah. Because the resistance gene produces a protein which enables the bacteria to survive the presence of the antibiotic. Okay. Now also in this um, bacteria, in the plasmid, there is a gene which gives the bacteria a resistance to another antibiotic called 
tetracycline. Yes. Now tetracycline is an antibiotic which will kill the bacteria that don't possess the resistance gene. The resistance gene enables them to make a protein which means that they won't be killed. Okay. Now, also in this plasmid, in the middle of the tetracycline resistance gene, there is a restriction enzyme recognition site where the restriction enzyme will cut. Now, if the restriction enzyme cuts there, and if you introduce into that point a gene, so you put a gene in here, having cut this open, yeah. and a, a length of DNA is incorporated at that point, then the presence of that will inactivate the tetracycline resistance gene. Yeah. Now, having mixed the, cut open the plasma with the, with the restriction enzyme, which is going to cut at this point, and mixed it with the gene you wish to incorporate, yes. and with a bit of DNA ligase to get it to join up the sugar phosphate backbone, you then heat shock the bacteria to try and make them more competent, so they take up more plasmids and go okay. in. You then take the sample that you've, you've ended up with and you pour it onto a bacterial plate, sorry, put, pour it onto a um, plate and the plate contains so this plate contains ampicillin. Yeah. Now, on here is ampicillin. Now, if we poured on a droplet from this, from the thing you've tried to transform, and if on this plate we got five colonies, then what can you tell me about these five colonies? Okay, so what you correctly said was that each one of these. Um, each colony here comes from a single bacteria, and that single bacteria contained a plasmid, and the plasmid meant that there was a resistance to ampicillin. Yeah. Now, what we have to then find, so all of these are resistance to ampicillin, so what we then do is we put um, a cloth over the top, we tap it down, we peel it off, and then we put it onto a agar plate that contains not ampicillin that contains tetracycline so what we're going to get then okay so if this was the, our first plate and this had five colonies yeah. and this each one of these colonies comes from a single bacteria that's divided it's all resistant to ampicillin put a piece of paper on it peel it off put it onto the other um, agar and the other agar has got tetracycline on it now, if a colony has grown here, it means that it produces a protein which enables it to survive the presence of the tetracycline antibiotic. Now, if you remember back to what we talked about here, was that there was a recognition site within the middle of the tetracycline resistance gene. Yeah. So if we've cut it open, and then we've inserted in a gene at that point, yeah. then you should have inactivated the tetracycline resistance gene so it no yeah. longer works. So what, when you're looking at this, you have a plate here that they are resistant to ampicillin, therefore they contain the plasmid. Okay. You have a plate here where these colonies are resistant to tetracycline. Okay. Therefore, they haven't had anything inserted into the middle of the plasmid. However, this colony here, this one is resistant to ampicillin, but it's not resistant to tetracycline. Okay. Therefore, this must be the colony that have inserted into the middle the tetracycline gene. Okay. So having seen that this colony fails to grow on tetracycline, okay. you can then return back to this colony scrape that colony off and because it's come from a single cell that's divided by binary fish and you know they're all genetically identical okay. and then you could put it into a vial and culture it 
And at that point, you know that you're culturing um, bacteria that contain the plasmid, that contain the gene that you want to insert into it.